Hi and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Rachel and in this video I'm going to break down the handstands for you. We start by firstly understanding the foundation and the fundamental position of the handstand and then I'm going to give you a few tips and ideas on the way that you can lift your feet away and find that airtime in the handstand. So if you haven't already checked out the wrist health and wrist strength tutorial, I definitely recommend that you do that. Make sure your body is nice and warm before we have a go at this. And at the very end, take time to counter pose, take time to come back to your intention and find that smooth, steady rhythm before you go about your day. Have fun with this. No expectation, no pushing, no forcing. Just see where your body wants you to move to today. You don't need anything in particular, just a yoga mat, a lot of space around you. When you're ready, let's get going. So when it comes to handstands, the first thing to appreciate is that it is a journey to get to handstands. It doesn't happen naturally for most people. A lot of people really do have to practice and be patient with themselves, but persevere through. With these skills that I'm about to give you and you will be able to reach that handstand position. So when it comes into, into handstand we have to understand the anatomy of the body. So instead of coming into it from a gymnastic point of view we come in through a yoga way and we start that by actually grounding into the hands. The hands are the foundation, the hands are grounded and planted before we lift our legs upwards. So the actual position of your hands, your, your hands are shoulder distance apart. Your fingers are spread wide, as wide as they can be. And we press down especially to the base of the index finger and the thumb joint. This side of the hand is a lot stronger than the other side, which is more cartilage. So do keep pressing down and be conscious of lifting this particular area. I want to keep most of the weight on the inside of the hand here, where index finger and thumb join. And really just use the pinky side of the hand to help with your balance. The fingertips are active the whole way through. So instead of placing the hands down and just having them flat, make them work for you. Squeeze your fingertips in towards the palm of your hand. So you're gripping or like you're clawing into a rock face. And you're actually not perfectly still in that handstand, just like you're not perfectly still when you stand up. Even though you may stand up straight and think that you're still, the forces are still being applied on your body. You're moving very slightly forwards and backwards. So that's, that's exactly the same when we're in a handstand too. So your fingertips are stabilizing you alongside the abdominal muscles, of course, also helping to stabilize, but really the foundation is your hands and that's where we begin. So as we ground down through the palms of the hands, the shoulders should be directly on top of the wrists. Then we're going to press the ground away to create as much space between you and the ground as you can. So your elbows aren't bent, they're going to be straight, strong and active. And we are consciously pressing the mat away as we come into handstand. The abdominal muscles play a huge role in this handstand um, stabilization, the holding of the handstand upright. And this section of your abdominals, your uh, front section here, superficial front line, superficial meaning closest to the surface, is called your rectus abdominis. Then on the sides, the oblique muscles, there's internal and external obliques, and then transverse abdominals as they wrap along the front. But what is also working are the muscles that are surrounding your spine, your quadrus lumbarum, and also your psoas muscles as well. So everything, if you imagine putting on a corset, everything within that corset would be your core, and your core is engaged. So instead of doing a banana back shape, so like a C-shaped curve in a handstand position, we actually want to consciously pull the navel towards the spine. So we're aiming for a flat back almost as you come into the handstand. So the shoulders are over the top of the wrists, but then the ankles over top of the hips hips over the top of the shoulders. We're making that straight line position rather than coming into a banana back like this. 
So starting with the hands then, we're gonna grind down into the hands. We're gonna tuck the toes underneath and come into a downward facing dog position, okay? Soften the knees as much as you need to and then walk your feet forwards just a little bit to make it a smaller version of downward facing dog. From this position here, I want you to consciously pull your navel up towards the spine. You are engaging that core musculature. From here, align your shoulders over the top of the wrist. And this will really start to make a difference as you're practicing your handstands because you are already starting the handstand shape of having the shoulders on top of the wrist. Remember, the fingers are active here. So I'm gonna stay grounded through my right foot. I'm gonna lift my left leg away. I am right dominant, so this just feels like a more natural position to enter a handstand in. You might have to play around with whichever side feels best for you. But it's good that you start to train both sides rather than only training that dominant side, just to create the balance and the harmony in the body. So with your shoulders directly over your wrists, left leg is reaching to the sky, just starting to rock forwards and backwards onto the tiptoes. So notice what I'm doing with my body, I'm rocking forwards and backwards, but as I'm leaning forward, I'm pressing the mat away. I press the mat away instead of collapsing into the shoulders. So do that a few times, see how that feels, just to rock forwards, bring in some weight over the top of your wrists. If that feels okay, train both sides, but progression from there is to kick your heel towards your bottom. Okay, so coming back to that small downward facing dog, the shorter version of downward dog, shoulders can start over the top of the wrist, so just moving forwards. Right foot is grounded, left leg is lifting. So as I shift forward onto my tiptoes, kick up, heel to bottom. Lean forwards, kick up, heel to bottom. Left leg is reaching upwards as I'm leaning forwards. Kick heel to bottom, come down. Still pressing the mat away as I lean forwards. To practice that on the right side and the left side until that starts to feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more natural. So coming into that shape again, the small downward dog, shoulders over the wrist, left leg is active, it's not floppy, the knees and bent, I am consciously pressing away. So I'm going to lean forward, kick up, heel to bottom, find a little bit of air time and then come down again, okay? From there, we kick up, heel to bottom, find some air time, press the mat away, extend both legs, still pressing the mat away and then come on down. So when I'm in my handstand position, I am pushing down through my hands as much as I'm pointing my toes up towards the sky. My navel is engaged, everything is hugging towards the midline of the body. Okay, if you want to jump into handstand with both feet, we can start in that downward facing dog pose again. So downward facing dog, make it a smaller downward facing dog. Shift your shoulders over the top of your wrists. Engage core, pull your navel to the spine. Now keep the gaze forward between your two hands. Bend your knees. Think about lifting your hips upwards towards the sky, okay? So as you do that, press the ground away. Hips lift up, hips lift up, hips lift up. Come on down. Have a go at practicing lifting your hips upwards rather than keeping your hips down. And there's a huge difference between that. Remember that handstand position. We're trying to get the hips over the top of the shoulders, the shoulders on top of your wrists. And then the forces can be applied onto them and they are equal, onto your body and they're equal. Okay, so the way to lift up into a handstand with two feet, small down dog, shoulders over wrists, pull the navel towards the spine, bend the knees, hips lift up and down, up, press the ground away, 
breathe fully, keep the gaze down, and then come on down when you're ready. Always remember to counter pose a handstand by just spending time in child pose position. Forehead can come down, chest rest down. It really helps to relax the body after. Also will help to bring the benefits to your body as well. Instead of kind of rushing up and going on with the rest of your life, take a moment to appreciate the journey, to thank your body for all of the hard work that it does and a really, really great chance to reconnect with your breath as well.